Hi, I'm Richard and I've helped hundreds of students to get into top business schools over the last 10 years. And I'm joined today by my good friend, Joe Miller. Hi, my name's Joe Miller. Uh, since leaving my job in investment banking four years ago, I've won awards for tutoring hundreds of students into uh, the best universities for master's programs around Britain and beyond. Now, a question that we get asked all the time is which courses should I apply to? And of course, which is the best management program in 2024? Joe, the FT keeps saying time and time again that it is London Business School. Do you agree that that's the best master management program? I think that there's, there's lots of different ways that you can gauge whether a master's program is great, whether it be starting salary and you're going to get a return on the investment, uh, the expertise within the faculty, the professors, um, or even the location. For me, the best gauge is how my clients have got on yeah. on that course. Uh, and having helped tens of people now get into LBS for the MIM or the GMIM, uh, I can tell you that very few, if any, have ever regretted it or have ever found flaws in the program. You know, with average starting salaries over £50,000. I had one client two years ago who secured a six-figure salary when they graduated from the MIM. Um, it's without shadow of a doubt a great return on investment and probably does make it the best programme in, in London, maybe even in Europe. Was that six-figure starting salaries? So maybe about, what, 23 by that time? That was indeed. I mean, one of the big misconceptions is management is just wired towards consulting, not finance. Um, this person left LBS, went and worked in private equity after their bonus. They were on a six-figure salary. And you can actually download their management employment report and see these kinds of statistics. I find the same. My students I send absolutely love LBS. They've got such cool electives. The teaching quality is amazing. I think just the fact that their into process is there. You actually meet with alumni and it's the alumni who have the final decision on do we want this person to join our course. The flexibility, the professionalism, the reputation, the employment, I recommend LBS so, so heavily. Now, it is a bit of a longer application process. There's mm. no personal statement, of course, and they do have to go and submit. It used to be 11 questions, but they've just condensed it down they've this year. It, yeah. I think great changes, and I now recommend it to all my students. The only thing that holds on the back is, of course, that GMAT requirement. Yeah, I think, I mean, a few of my clients we've been able to secure waivers for, um, but I think the element of the application process I like most, as rigorous as it is, is that it mirrors that of a company. You know, they have recruitment professionals that encourage you to send them your CV. They're happy to schedule a coffee chat. I mean, I had a woman, uh, a great client of mine just recently, um, she decided to have a child before applying and she wasn't confident whether or not universities would like her scenario or not. And LBS set up a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with her. They met her for a coffee. They walked her through the clubs and societies that might work for her and her family. And this kind of individual support is very unique. And we don't really see it in, in many other universities. And actually one of the hidden criteria we talk about, those, those pros and the interviews, is your networking ability. So LBS, it's not just good to go through open day, it will actually help you to name drop who you met in the application when they ask, have you met anybody? And you say, oh no, I haven't yet. Yeah. That's actually a massive red flag. They want you to say, I met this person. They'll then reach out to them and they'll say, oh, they were absolutely brilliant. So a huge tip. We've also got the MIM, MAM, Martin Analytics and Management, which is a bit more data focused, a great course, but you, you should have coding experience, I think, to apply for that. And then the two year global masters in management where you have to do your second year in Shanghai. And that's a good course because the acceptance rates go from about 7% up to about 30%. But for that one, I would always recommend going to LSE's two year course. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there are misconceptions often with the LBS two-year GMIM because the second year is in China. A lot of th people think it's wide towards Chinese applicants and it's not actually. You can't be from mainland China and apply to that course. So there are a lot of misconceptions. Both of my clients that applied to that last year also received £15,000 scholarships. So I know there are added bonuses to, to applying for this. But I think you're right. I mean, LSE is a very different kettle of fish to LBS. It's not a business school. It's an academic institution. But their GMIM is probably as good as it gets. 
That's when it comes to two-year courses. There's a 33% acceptance rate for an LSE course. It's unheard of because that two-year yeah. final commitment. And you don't have to do an LSE, of course. You can go and do an MBA exchange semester yeah. in a business school. Um, you've got, I think, 200 different international uh, universities. So I've had people go to Sao Paulo. I've had people still go to China. I've had people go all around Europe. I think the flexibility, the GMIM is probably the course I most recommend that people haven't even considered. But if you've got the budget and got the time, particularly, I think, for those who don't have much work experience. The requirements are quite low for GMIM, and because you've got that middle break, you can do an internship and then go back and use that to get a job. So it gives you a bit longer. And let's be honest, a lot of people use masters because they don't have a job lined up, or well, two years gives you even longer. Yeah, I, I think ab absolutely that. And, and also, if you're coming from a non management business background, I've got a client at the moment who wants to work in art galleries when she's older, she wants to run her own. Um, then absolutely it makes sense to spend that extra year because it gives you that summer in between to apply for penultimate positions, it gives you time to really get on board with business and management beforehand. I, I actually think LSE has found a really nice balance between business school, you know, capstone project, MBA, exchange, being part of SEMS, and then also academia. If you look at the school calendar page, I mean, they let you specialize and concentrate in very specific areas, human resource management, international strategy. Um, and so the balance they found is, is great. And it probably puts them right there with, with LBS for any management course. That's a great point. Whereas LBS has those um, three options, but really two, the more coding focus and core management, and then a two year version of it. LBS, they actually, sorry, LSE, always happens. LSE has uh, marketing and specialism, human resources. There's a lot more. I mean, this is LSE's bread and butter. It's business. It's close to economics and finance. This is what they always do. So would the GMIM be able to take over the one year course for you? Uh, I don't know that it would overtake. I mean, I think it entirely depends on who you are and what you're using the masters for. If you have very little experience, you're not sure what you're doing, um, and perhaps you're not the most competitive candidate, then the GMIM is a really realistic option for you that's probably going to give you the best return on investment. Um, however, if you're a candidate that perhaps does have a great background, has already done internships, maybe even has a job offer already, then a one-year programme makes complete sense. There's no need to spend an extra year at university should you not need to. So before we move on, I always recommend LBS one-year course and almost always recommend the LSE one or two year course. Most do the one year course again. Now, Oxbridge, let's bring them in. Yeah. I very rarely have students apply to Oxford and Cambridge because their offering isn't really appropriate for what most people are looking for. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, I think we have a lot of candidates that apply to Oxbridge, but it's typically your academic PhD research type candidate unless it's somebody perhaps trying to gain, gain the system, right? Because their employment rates are still amazing. But you're right, Oxford don't offer a management course for brand new grads. Why? Who knows? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> they offer the project, the project major management course for people with you know, years of experience. The average age is over 40. And then, of course, the MBAs. Um, Cambridge do offer that MPhil in management, but it's a very academic course. Basically a stepping stone to a PhD, right? Absolutely. And the PhD at Cambridge is amazing. So if you want to go down that route, great. And also I've, I've had candidates that have been successful before and they don't. They, you know, they graduate from Cambridge and jump into a management consultancy firm. But that's not what it's intended for. Um, so you're right. Their offering is not great. Although should you end up at Cambridge studying management, I'm sure you'll still do very, very well. A good one to have on the CV. Yeah. Let's go wider. So LSE, LBS always, Oxbridge only really if we're looking for a PhD and want to commit you know, three, four years. Um, there's a few around the rest of the world that we can bring in. We've also got Imperial and UCL. Now, Imperial and UCL, I think, are both quite similar. I typically recommend Imperial over UCL, although the application process right now is like 3,000 words and many questions. It's quite quite time consuming. Yeah. But what I love about those is both of them are really good sort of backdoors into finance. Now, to get into finance, you basically have to have a first class these days, but a 2-1 is perfectly acceptable for Imperial or UCL, and their specialisms and their pathways allow you to specialise in finance. So I spend a lot of time telling candidates they're probably not quite strong enough for the finance finance degree, 
but they can still become a banker via Imperial and UCL. So I often bring those in for both management and finance applicants yeah. as a really, really good alternative to straight finance. I think the Imperial one's really interesting. You know, Imperial is historically a STEM university teaching maths, physics, chemistry and the like. Um, and several years ago, it started this business school. It's now branched out even into undergrad courses. Um, the thing that I like most about management is they have two programs. Management for people from a non-business background and international management for people from a business background. So actually they really cater towards people that have studied history, sociology, psychology and whatnot. Um, so you're right, it's a great stepping stone. Has it proven itself as a business school like LBS um, or as a university in social sciences like LSE? Not for me. Um, so yes. It's an, elite, it's an elite university. Do I rank it with LSE and LBS? No, I don't. Almost always a backup, unless someone's got a very specific they want to push through. Yes. So let's bring in a couple of internationals. There's so many around the world we can bring in, but what would be your number one international program if you were to bring it in? I think you can't go wrong with INSEAD. Um, although the university I would say that is very, very popular now is IE. Um, lots and lots of students are applying to IE, whether it be as a backup or otherwise. Um, they have invested a huge amount of money into a very swanky Canary Wharf style building. I don't know, you can Google it, like this amazing <laughs> black skyscraper um, in Madrid. And it attracts a lot of candidates. So I, I would probably say one of those two. I think for me, just to finish up quickly, international, I mean, MIT Sloan, amazing. Yeah. Probably the only one I see people consistently turn down even LBS and LSE for. I also really rate the HEC, the Builder Bear degree of management. The amount of elective and specialism tracks and these additional certificates, they are amazing for employment opportunities. And they seem to be the best in the world right now at getting you any job that you want because of that flexibility and ranking. Right, so I think our final ranking here is LBS one year, LSE one or two year, depending on your credentials. And then probably for me, Imperial or UCL as a backup, and maybe one of IE or HEC, unless you're really strong, in which case MIT might go above. Absolutely. I think we probably need another video. You mentioned an American university there. I mean, that, that probably needs an entirely new video. We could talk about American universities all day, but I absolutely agree. I think LSE and LBS continuously prove themselves as being a cut above the rest. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, if you'd like to see more of this content, do let us know in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Which courses are you looking to apply to? We get back to all of our comments. Hope that found that helpful. And if you'd like to work with professionals such as myself, Joe, or one of the 1000 exhibitions professionals in our network, we would love to help you. We have a 92% success rate and contact us using the information on screen now. If you like this, please do give us a like or subscribe. Most importantly, good luck.